Good afternoon and congratulations to all Nigerian workers as we celebrate the 2018 edition of the Workers' Day. My name is Ronke Kolawole, welcoming you to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. The ongoing review of national minimum wage is cheering news to Nigerian workers during the May Day 2018 celebration in Abuja, as leaders of the organized labor commended the process by the Tripartite Committee. Although the celebration was not devoid of the challenges confronting workers and what constitutes a barrier to national development, which should be addressed. Labor correspondent Emmanuel Ayimiro was there in our reports. There is victory for all. Forward. 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 Every Workers' Day provides an opportunity for workers to take stock and reflect over the last one year, thereby projecting for the future. While Labour commended the government over the fight against corruption, economic recovery, provision of bail out funds to states, executive order on the ease of doing business and many more. The need to speed up the process of industrialization, adequate funding of the educational sector, health, security and oil and gas required an urgent attention. We commend the effort of the current government on economic diversification, particularly through agriculture. We are not unmindful of serious structural issues that undermine the progress being made, deeply undermine inclusive growth and impact negatively, negatively on sustainable development. We acknowledge and commend the federal government on, of Nigeria for the launching of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. Together with the existing National Industrial Revolution Plan, the plan can promote survival of industries and create and creation of mass decent jobs rightly set the target of reducing petroleum product import into Nigeria by 80% in 2018. As, as laudable as these policies are, we must continue to insist that FPC must revive the refineries in order to meet the set refining target. We must implement the National Automotive Industry Development Plan. So we have to engage our own population by developing our own industry, by producing what we need to consume, by producing our own vehicles that we need to be using in Nigeria. Both the organized labor and government appear to be on the same page on the issues of the new national minimum wage. It is our hope that given the high expectation of Nigerian workers, the committee will complete its work by August 2018 as planned so that by the last quarter of this year, the hard pressed Nigerian workers will have a new lease of life. But I'm happy to see the strength of the trade unions and uh, how they take into, the, um, into the consideration the minimum wage, which is very important for the lower paid uh, laborers and for, for people not in permanent positions. I use this occasion on the May Day to encourage workers to always imbibe the culture of communication and hope uphold the principle of the use of strike as a last resort. I promise you that our doors will always be open to engage your leadership towards a consensual end in all relevant matters of interest to workers' welfare. The occasion of the 2018 Workers' Day celebration did not end without an appeal to all Nigerians, especially members of the political class, to respect democratic norms and not consider any issue a do or die affair as the nation progressed towards the 2019 general election. From Eagle Square in Abuja, Emmanuel Ayimiro, NTA News. And as the Nigerian labor movement marks its 40th year of struggle in the country, Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports that the turnout was higher than that of last year. Most of the roads in the city center are almost empty, and the federal secretariat that houses highest percentage of the civil servants became a shadow of itself. But turning our camera lens to the Eagle Square, we saw the convergence of Nigerian workers. 
Workers from both public and private sectors were screened at the entry point to gain access into the square. In their different regalia, they formed clusters as they listened to the Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Chris Ngige, on the way forward for the nation's workforce. And that gives us hope that things will be better in the future. My expectation after today is the government to pronounce a reasonable take home for media worker. The take home pay can no longer sustain us, neither can it sustain our family. And the cost of services are very, very high. The role of labor movement in national development, there to struggle, there to win, is the theme of this year's celebration. But there are a lot of places where they equally need to key into, in terms of educating the populace about what the present government are doing in terms of infrastructural development, in terms of building a foreign reserve, in terms of making the local production of the entire fabrics of the society be more profitable to the farmers especially. If you look at the GDP of this country, transportation is number four. You can see how we move Nigeria economically. Just outside the exit gates were traders who took advantage of the day to make BRICS businesses. By this time last year, I say more than today. Your family will welcome you. So you have to at least give something to them that will make them happy. The Nigerian workforce is instrumental to the implementation of government's programs and policies. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Meanwhile, improved welfare package for workers, better conditions of service, and entrenching professionalism came up for discussion on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria today as organized labor celebrates 2018 Workers' Day. Kunle Adeyeye reports. While speaking on the program, Chairman of the Nigeria Labor Congress, Ayuba Waba, and the Secretary General Trade Union Congress, Musa Lawal Ozegi, commended workers in the country for their commitment despite the economic realities. A national minimum is not only for government workers. It's for all employers of labor, including medium and small-scale enterprises, including other employers in the organized private sector, and therefore, the team need to discuss this issue in line with this principle. One of the problems the worker faces today is a social body. First, the worker is expected that after his salary, he's the only one who will take care of his family, take care of his two fees, and all social issues that are supposed to be carried out by government. Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngege, said the federal government appreciates Nigerian workers for their resilience and dedication to democracy. Uh, labor in Nigeria today, I think, I'm um, reasonably satisfied. At least uh, what I met on ground, I think uh, we've tried our best in this administration to uh, inch up to the next step, next higher level. We have very good uh, and cordial relationship with uh, the unions uh, we have in Nigeria. Another guest also called for the repeal of unfriendly labor laws. The National Assembly ought to be forthcoming. We have military labor laws that are breathing heavily on the neck of the Nigerian workers. They also spoke on issues of strike as the last option of pressing home workers' demands. In Abuja, Kunle Adeyeye, NCA News. Also, President of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, has commended the resilience, dedication and contribution of Nigerian workers to national development. Saraki, in a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Yusuf Olaniyonu, also described workers as the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. He called on the workers to continue to put in their best in any sector they find themselves, saying their efforts shall never be in vain. Saraki also promised that the National Assembly, under his leadership, will support all efforts aimed at ensuring that workers are adequately rewarded and well catered for. 
In the same vein, Speaker Yakubu Dogera, on behalf of the House of Representatives, congratulates Nigerian workers as they join their counterparts elsewhere to celebrate the 2018 Workers' Day. In a statement by the Special Advisor to the Speaker on Media and Public Affairs, Turaki Hassan, Speaker Dogera underscores the importance of workers to the growth and prosperity of Nigeria despite mega wages. While the Speaker expresses the desire of the National Assembly to pass the new minimum wage bill as soon as it is transmitted to the legislature by the executive, he commended the courage, commitment to service and nation building of Nigerian workers and urged them to continue to support government policies and agenda. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, has urged civil servants to be in tune with world best practices. She spoke with Adibola Brooklyn Sunday in Abuja. Business index will go even much higher. Mrs. Oyoita says in line with the present administration's ease of doing business policy, civil servants are key to its actualization. Civil servants to be more committed, more dedicated in their work, and that their, their cry for uh, improved uh, salaries and allowances and so on is being looked into by this administration. This administration is an administration that has a human face. She reiterates government's commitment to making life better for workers. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Workers in Lagos also held May Day rally. Let's join Jennifer in Lagos for details and other reports from that zone. Jennifer, it is our day. Happy Workers' Day to you. Day to you. It's our day indeed. Thank you, Runke. Good to have you join us in Lagos and happy Workers' Day. Now, the clamor for approval and implementation of new salary, salary structure for the workforce, elimination of staff casualization, and streamlining of taxation policy was the focus of workers in Lagos State as joined their counterparts across the world to mark this year's Workers' Day. Governor of Lagos State, Akin Wumi Ambode, who called for renewed vigor for optimal productivity, said government will not default in its obligation to the workers. Michael Olaleye reports. Workers from different fields and professions converged on the Agege Township Stadium to commemorate this year's Workers' Day. The genesis of the event could be traced to 1860 when workers fought for an eight hour working hours in Chicago. Since then, Workers across the globe has used the day to draw the attention of government and employers to their plight. As expected, they want the government to review salary structure in the face of the present economic reality. It is our hope and expectation that when the national minimum wage is reviewed upward, it will be embraced and implemented by our digital government. The labor leaders also used the platform to demand a stop in the casualization of workers, coherency in the contributory pension scheme, and that sorting of services. It is an aspiration to continue to employ workers on contract basis in capacity that are needed on long term basis. How can the government change the heads of private employers in this regard? Lagos State Governor Akiumi Ambode said all issues affecting workers will be addressed to provide a conducive environment for civil servants in the state. We have never defaulted in meeting our commitment to workers on a contributory pension scheme and have always prioritized the payment of workers' salaries and the monuments. Workers in Lagos State are, however, optimistic that some of its recommendations to the Trapatite Committee on National Minimum Wage will be adopted. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. Now, worried by increasing statistics of illicit drug consumption, especially codeine among young people in Nigeria, the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, has premiered an expository documentary on codeine abuse titled Sweet, Sweet Codeine. Hingino John Adams reports that the premiere was also a forum for launching of Africa's Eye, a new platform for investigative reporting. Oh, 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 oh. 
This scene may not be unconnected with drug abuse, especially high consumption of codeine, a cough syrup, which is now being abused at an alarming rate. About 33 million people allegedly abuse codeine every year the world over. In Nigeria, it is estimated that about 3 million bottles are consumed daily in Jigawa and Kano states alone, which prompted the BBC's five month investigation on codeine consumption. This kind of documentary, for instance, will ginger or reawaken in us as journalists the drive to want to do more investigative journalism. The, the BBC has thrown a challenge. Yeah. So let other journalists and other one million Nigerians take up the challenge. Other states covered are Lagos and Kwara. The investigation also revealed how codeine gets to the black market through workers in some pharmaceutical companies. It become an opener for us to know the extent of uh, damage that has been done to the society. It's a cancer in our society. Uh, it's wiping out a whole generation of young people that are becoming addicts. That never imagined that a simple cough syrup had so much effect, negative, on the entire survivor of the nation. The authorities concerned should now know where to direct the issues and how to tackle it. In October 2017, the Senate mandated its Committee on Drugs to explore a legislative intervention to combat the menace. And in January this year, the federal government set up a committee on the matter. In Lagos, Hengino John Adams, NTA News. Those are the stories from Lagos at this hour. Back to Ronke in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Ronke, happy Workers' Day again. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Happy Workers' Day to you. Nigeria and the United States have resolved to deepen their highly cherished partnership and cooperation in areas of mutual interest as they seek the future of peace, strength and prosperity. President Muhammadu Buhari and his U.S. counterpart Donald Trump stated this at a joint media briefing after leading their country's delegation for high-level talks in the White House. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. Exactly three weeks ago, President Muhammad Buhari was at the 10 Downing Street in the heart of London for talks with Prime Minister Theresa May, and now in the White House on the invitation of President Donald Trump. At all times, as well as in all places and circumstances, uppermost in the mind of the Nigerian leader is Nigeria's security, stability, respectability, and socio-economic prosperity. A befitting diplomatic ceremony was put together to formally receive President Muhammad Buhari as he arrived at the White House to a warm welcome by President Donald Trump. The two leaders thereafter proceeded to the Oval Office for a restricted meeting before joining their respective countries' delegations for talks behind closed doors on areas of common interest. These include security, trade, governance, human rights, and humanitarian crises. Addressing a joint media briefing later, both Presidents Muhammad Buhari and Donald Trump acknowledged their country's strategic partnership for peace and security, conflict resolution, as well as the global fight against terrorism. They therefore promised to work more closely together in deepening the highly beneficial relations in the interests of both countries. Nigeria is a valued partner and a good friend. I look forward to working closely with you to deepen our cooperation and forge an even closer partnership. The United States is committed to working alongside Nigeria as we seek a future of strength, prosperity, and peace for both of our countries. Nigeria and the United States share a long history of close and cordial relations, which encompass political, economic, military, social, and cultural cooperation. We recognize the strong United States support in our fight against terrorism and also appreciated very much the United States agreement to sell 12 super to Kano A-29 warplanes and weapons to Nigeria to effectively fight terrorism. We express gratitude to the United States support in the reconstruction and rehabilitation efforts in the northeast of Nigeria, as well as humanitarian assistance to the internally displaced persons. We are doing all we can to secure the release of the remaining abducted school, 
gas from Defchi and Chibok. In this context, we will continue to welcome United States collaboration in intelligence gathering, hostage negotiations, and information sharing. President Buhari in particular hopes that Nigeria will continue to count on the support of the United States in the fight against corruption as well as economic development. Our aim is to diversify our own economy by focusing on agriculture and food security, power and infrastructure. We have cut the importation of rice by 90 percent, thereby saving a significant amount of money. We very much welcome increased United States investment in Nigerian economy, especially the non-oil sector. We thank the United States government very much for cooperation we have received in our effort to recover stolen funds. Our two governments have put the machinery in place for their respective attorney generals to collaborate in ensuring the return to Nigeria of over 500 million United States dollars of looted funds siphoned away in banks around the world. And we will be investing substantially in Nigeria if they can create that level playing field that we have to very much ask for. And I especially want to thank President Buhari for Nigeria's partnership and leadership in the fight against terrorism. He's been a real leader. President Muhammad Buhari is not the first African head of state to visit the White House, but he is the very first to be formally invited by the U.S. President Donald Trump. This clearly indicates that the enormous goodwill and respect for the Nigerian leader by the international community can only get better. From the White House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. In the meantime, members of the Nigerian delegation to the high-level talks between President Muhammadu Buhari and the U.S. President Donald Trump have been speaking on the major takeaways for Nigeria, describing them as impactful on the nation's economy, security, and the fight against corruption. State House correspondent Adam Sambo again reports. Although this is not the first time President Muhammad Buhari has honored an invitation to the White House since coming to power, the latest by President Donald Trump was more eagerly anticipated. And as the high-level engagements between the two countries have come and gone, some members of the Nigerian delegation say everything desirous have been achieved and the future of the country can only get better. If you look at the totality of why we are here, I think we have even achieved more than what we bargained for. He showed uh, what I would call approval for almost all that uh, the administration of President Mohamed Buhari is doing. The issue of, the, uh, of security, you had the president of the U.S. saying that issues that we are even thinking will come in 2020. He wants to hasten it and bring, start bringing some of them. And he has also opened his mind to potential investment from the U.S. in Nigeria. And uh, with that kind of agreement, and will also his pass mark on the president's performance, especially in respect to handling of issues of insecurity and, of course, anti-corruption. It means that uh, Mr. President will go back and encourage to do more. Nigeria's ministers of foreign affairs, trade and investment, as well as justice, gave an overview of the president's visit to the United States and described their achievements as remarkable. There were good wins, uh, the security side, continued cooperation, repatriation of these uh, uh, funds, and increase in trade. All these efforts are geared towards um, increasing value-added production in Nigeria and also creating employment. Going forward, we expect to see a lot more good things come out of this visit. There was a clear political goodwill and commitment that has now been given by the respective governments in terms of working together towards the repatriation of the looted assets of over 500 million US dollars. Fundamentally for us, it's not just to return the money, but also to return it to use it for the benefit of the Nigerian people. And uh, Mr. President is happy. The business entrepreneurs from the US are also equally very happy and they're more than willing to partake in our roadmap for this national career that uh, government is intending to uh, put together, which will be private sector led and driven. The ministers say follow up engagements are planned ahead between the US and Nigerian government officials to fast track the implementation of the major decisions.
From Washington, D.C., Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Minister of Information and Culture, Y in New York, took time out of his busy schedule of engaging U.S.-based media outfits and meeting leaders of think tank research organizations in driving home the Nigerian perspective against the backdrop of growing fake news and misinformation being churned out by those he has consistently referred to as desperate opp oppositions. He was guest at the Nigeria House in New York, just as he also visited the UN Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed. At the Nigeria House, where the minister was received by the Acting Consular General, Suleiman Tanko, who expressed gratitude for the minister's visit, describing it as novel and a move in the right direction because it offers the federal government of Nigeria the onerous opportunity to tell the world the true situation back home in Nigeria as against the fake news being reeled out in the social media, which is creating negative impression about the present administration administration that is doing all in its capacity, despite the paucity of funds at its disposal to reposition the country in the Committee of Nations in its capacity as the giant of Africa. Lai Mohammed on his part said his visit is long overdue and that the present administration under President Muhammad Buhari is ready to engage the world in a no hold back disposition to tell a story in its right perspective. Lai Mohammed was also at the UN headquarters where he was guest to Nigeria's Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General. Amina Mohammed also commended the minister for his ability to visit the United States-based media giants and renowned research organizations who have emerged as influencer of global affairs is a boost for the present administration's resolve to key into the club of global decision makers. The Information and Culture Minister was in the United States, where he had engagement with media organizations such as Reuters, AP, AFP, Washington Post, New York, Wall Street Journal, Al Jazeera, CNN, among others, just as he was guest at the Atlantic Council and the Council on Foreign Relations Reform. If you're just tuning in, this is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. More reports after this timeout. Join us again. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in free. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Expected gains of the International Conference on Cross-Border Crime for Secured Environment to Guarantee Growth is the focus this week on NTA Tuesday Live. The program promises to be incisive and educative. Don't miss it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. It is with great pleasure and peace of mind the Committee for the Restructuring and Remodeling of Patuscum Satra Marks in Nyobe State wishes to extend its appreciation to all those who contributed to the pace of work recorded in the project. The committee wishes to assure the team worshippers of its commitment to reopen the monks for use at the commencement of Ramadan fast for 239 AH Islamic calendar. The committee, however, wishes to appeal to those who made pledges at the foundation ceremony to redeem such pledges and call in for more donations 
for early completion and payment of outstanding liabilities. May Allah reward you abundantly. Ramadan Mubarak in advance. Thrift Collection has been an age-long medium of saving among people. It's very good for trader. However, not everybody is honest and some have been known to run away with other people's sweats. I promise you when you join me, it's your cooperating by force. How careful can people be about entrusting their money to dubious or susu collectors? What, what do you mean by pack? Pack to the motor park or pack to where? What are you talking wait, about? Wait, 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 wait! I am the highest investor here! Your rip-cracking comedy, Professor John Bull, this week takes a comic look at the issues surrounding Osusu contribution and collection in this episode titled Osusu Contribution. This is Osusu Morias. I feel soporific and Pablo. Join us and laugh like never before. Mr. Madoya, I believe that's your name. Um, go on. Uh, what is that your question? Uh, I don't forget on the question. Is it over and out? Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow. Unlimited. Glad to know you're still watching NTA Nationwide. President Muhammadu Buhari has been commended for his many development projects in the South South, which have repositioned the region and impacted on the lives of the Sutsiri. A cross section of cross reverians from different political parties and affiliations made their position known in Calabar. Umar Basi Edit has the report. The ongoing federal road project, which cuts across various local government areas of the state, amongst other projects, have not only ameliorated the sufferings of the people, but also have ripple effect on socioeconomic activities. To appeal to the people of Cross River State that Buhari has been very nice to our state, he has been very nice to our people, he has given many, many appointments to Cross Riverians. We never saw this before. We are saying, when anybody has done good things to you, you have to reciprocate him. We should support him come 2019. While on an advocacy visit to some rural communities, including the Hausa settlement, the companions of Wari said, with the outstanding performance of the president, he deserves a second term in office. To make the group of the Buhari supporters to be succeed. The Buhari supporters in Cross River State say they are convinced that President Muhammadu Buhari is the best thing to happen to Nigeria. In Calabar, Umar Basidit, NTA News. And to all the news now, Nassau state government workers whose life ambition is to own houses as security for the future and well-being of their families, we have a positive response as plans are underway for the sale of existing housing estates in Lafia to occupants. Announcing the initiative to mark Workers' Day, Governor Almakura commended stakeholders for resilience and dedication to development of the state. Joshua Ujito reports. The housing estates long established for workers in Lafia and which the government plans to sell include Nasara and Abdullahi Adamu housing estates. While the state government works out the modalities, another mass housing project that will have 100 units is underway close to Lafia. Governor Umaru Tanko al Mukura also reveals that government has introduced housing and car loans for workers which disbursement to beneficiaries will soon commence. In addition, the state government is to embark on recruitment of unemployed graduates to fill in vacancies in the state civil service. Governor Al Mukura assures workers in the state that the state government will implement the new national minimum wage being canvassed by the organized labor. As a labor-friendly government, this administration uh, will continue to ensure industrial issues are resolved at a round table. I assure you that we will sustain our synergy with a view to strengthening our relationship as a panacea for efficient and effective service delivery on the one hand and the overall welfare of workers. Governor Al Mukura donated a 32 seater bus to NLC in the state as the state chairman of NLC, Abdullahi Adeka, commends the state government for cordial working relationship with labor in the state. In Lafia, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. More report from Femi Chits in LinkedIn Joss Network Center. Welcome to Joss. Dreams, hopes, 
expectations and chants of solidarity came alive as workers in Plata State converged on the Rangpam Township Stadium for this year's May Day celebration. Caleb Gochin was there. The almost endless march pass by various unions on the plateau brought out some of the feelings of the workers as evidenced either through the smiles, signs or demonstrations. <laughs> NLC Chairman Plato State, Jibrin Banchur, underscored the important role Nigerian workers play in nation building and called on government to reciprocate same by enhancing their welfare. As workers on the plateau, we remain committed to the survival of Nigeria and we are hard workers as labor leaders who must face the challenges and confront them squarely. Plata State Governor Simon Bakola Long, represented by Head of Civil Service Izam Azi, said the state government has in the past three years made commitments, dialogued and fulfilled most of its obligations to the workers, given the lean resources at its disposal. I can promise you, we are giving to the assurances you gave last year. And it stands to our page that we have thrown a little more Prominent among the demands of the workers is the actualization of the upward review of their salaries and wages, which they eagerly look forward to. In Jos Caleb Bochin, NTN News. Governor Samuel Lalong has pledged to support the European Union Center for Electoral Support by providing necessary institutional framework to strengthen the electoral process and democratic governance in the state. It was at the opening ceremony of a five-day workshop organized for the Forum of State Independent Electoral Commissions holding in Jos. Paul Dama reports. The workshop with the theme Leadership and Conflict Management for Electoral Stakeholders is organized by the European Union Electoral Support Group for Chairman of State Independent Electoral Commissions, which aims to brainstorm on ways to strengthen leadership capacities, increase level of confidence and self-awareness of electoral stakeholders, and to provide necessary tools to enhance dialogue-based decision-making throughout the electoral process in Nigeria. Governor Simon Lang, represented by his deputy, Professor Sonny Tuden, expressed confidence that the experience would avail an opportunity for state electoral officers to plan and conduct free, fair and credible elections at the local government level. We are hopeful that at the end of this training session, you are able to discuss on global fragilities and anticipated global conflicts will help us strengthen the process of conducting elections. Minister of Budget and Planning, Mr. Udo Udoma, who was represented by Ulukayode Adeniron, underscored the essence of the training considering the important role of electoral umpires in national electoral process. Project Director, European Center for Electoral Support, David Lenotro, represented by Joachim Bagnan, said the training was necessitated by the recommendation of the Nigerian government and the European Union Electoral Observation Mission on the 2015 general election in order to build a strong, effective, and legitimate democratic institution expected to cover the period of 2017 to 2021. In Jos, Paul Dama, NTA News. For optimal productivity, spirit of teamwork, and improved standard of operation, the Tree Armor Division Maxwell Kobe Cantonment has organized an interbrigade competition for some of its formations. Abdul Wahab Babankanti reports that the competition covers drill, map reading, weapon handling, obstacle crossing, and live firing. The participating formations within the jurisdiction of the three armored division are 33 artillery brigades, three div engineering brigades, 53 signal brigades, and three div garrison command. The general officer commanding three armored division, Major General Benjamin Ahanotsu, represented by the chief of staff, Brigadier General Alu Abdullahi, said the competition is for the rank of corporal and blue, which is targeted towards putting into practice various aspects of training acquired by the soldiers and also to improve the standard of regimentation and expert decor among troops. It is my hope and belief that all aspects of training 
and that is carried out in preparation for the competition will be brought to bear. I therefore urge you all to put in your best and display the highest level of workmanship throughout the competition. He, however, charged the soldiers to be disciplined and maintain standard throughout the period of the competition. The competition was opened with a drill. From Maxwell Kobe Cantonment, a blue bubble county, MTNS. Workers in Enugu State join their counterparts to celebrate their day. It's over to Chiago Nuina Enugu Studios for details. Studios for Thank you, pharmacists, and happy Workers' Day. This is Enugu. Enugu State Governor Ifanyi Uguayi has charged workers in the state to approach their duties with zeal and commitment while reassuring them of the state government's resolve to fast track all pending issues regarding their welfare to ensure overall development of the state. The governor was speaking during the 2018 Workers' Day celebration in Enugu with the theme, Labor Movement in National Development, There to Struggle, There to Win. Ijoma Ugweke has the details. Over the years, workers across Workers' Day on 1st May every year to celebrate the sacrifices made by the pioneer labor leaders at Chicago in 1886. This year, workers under the ages of organized labor and trade union Congress converged at the historic Michael Opera Square, Enugu, to show solidarity to this struggle of emancipation. Governor Ugwani commended the workers for their steadfastness in duties and support for the present administration in the state. He assured workers of his total commitment to their welfare. I therefore use this occasion to urge workers in Enugu State to remain steadfast and to always approach your duties with zeal and commitment so that collectively we can build the Enugu State of our dreams of Nigerian Labor Congress and that of Trade Union Congress in the state, while taking stock of the gains and challenges facing workers, commended Governor Gwain for his prudent management of resources in the state, which reflects in prompt payment of salaries, pensions and gratuity, as well as provision of dividends of democracy. He urged him to look into some of the teaching problems as regards implementation of centralized payment system in the state. We use this opportunity to commend the Enugu State Government for the exemplary leadership style put in place in Enugu State. We recall that a few days ago, the State Executive Council, headed by His Excellency, approved the sum of 100 million naira every month for the payment of March passed from different labor unions and trade union congresses added color to the event. In Enugu, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. The Ebony State Governor David Omahe has charged beneficiaries of social amenities in the rural areas of the state to protect the amenities as their personal property. The governor gave the charge at Ezan North Local Government Area during the inauguration of a water project which a non-governmental organization, Impact Care Foundation, constructed for the people of the area. Eva Aneke completes the report. Engineer Dave Umahe, who was represented by the State Commissioner for Water Resources, found that the abandonment which Alubalike has suffered in the hands of the previous administrations in the state and advised to work to do in the society to emulate the Impact Care Foundation so as to complement the state government's efforts at providing quality dividends of democracy to the people. He didn't wait for government to provide the water. And this shows that he's also appreciating what His Excellency is doing at the state level. The founder and chief executive officer of Impact Care Foundation said his foundation embarked on the project to serve the community as the people drink Akadoro stream, which resulted in cholera outbreak that took lives of many people in the area. We lost two people. And one of the victims is here, and his wife. Yeah. But today, with the help of God and Impact Care Foundation, we have already decided to put smile 
to add value to humanity because our dear governor loves humanity. The community, including the chairman of Alvarike Town Union, Mr. John Okezie, and the chairman of Alvarike Youth, Comrade Mike Mwaf EGK, appreciated the foundation for the project and to protect it. They said that the governors coming to their area was the first government official to visit the area in Enugu, Eva, and Eke. NTU News. The report wraps it up from here. Over now to you, Ronke, for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair Gonu in Enugu. Another break beckons now. More reports when Nationwide continues thereafter. That 2030, as a successor framework for the Millennium Development Goals, the global community rolled out a bigger, deeper, and more encompassing framework called the Sustainable Development Goals, designed to transform our world, lift the poor out of poverty, as well as ensure inclusive and healthy society. On Agenda 2030, we take you on a media trip to the global destination of the future we want, with everyone on board. We focus on the people and their struggle, the civil society and their agitations, the government and hard development effort, the global development agenda, its 17 goals and 169 targets. We bring you all the deliberations, insightful conversations and high-level partnerships on the road to global destination. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. Like it. It's another Children's Day celebration with NTA knowledge. It promises to be exciting and full of fun. Come, let's celebrate Children's Day on 24th May 2018. Featuring dance, mad past, drama, musical talent display, choreography, cultural dance, catching the train. That's not all. Bernie and Clown will be on ground to add color to the event. Theme, creating safe spaces for children, our collective responsibility. Schools, parents, what are you waiting for? You can't afford to miss this fun fair. Venue, NT Headquarters Arena, Area 11, Garaki, Abuja. Gate fee, 1,000 euro only. Time, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. For participation and sponsorship details, dial. I like it. <laughs> Come, let's celebrate children in a grand style. Happy, Happy Children's, Children's Day. Day. Our Anchor Boras program has created an agricultural revolution. In September 2015, we imported 644,000 tons of rice, costing more than 5 million US dollars per day. By September 2017, rice imports dropped by 95% to 22,000 tons. Our maize crop has exceeded 10 million tons this year. And through our rice and maize program, we now have 12.2 million farmers. We are now the world's second largest producer of sorghum after the United States, third in minute after India, and we lead the world's production of yam and cassava. We've created numerous plantations solely for the export market, and our plan is to increase the agricultural sector from 25 to 49 percent of our GDP, thereby reducing poverty and increasing food security. Thanks for staying with us. Sokoto is our last stop on Nationwide, and Asmao is our guide. Hello, Asmao. Ronke, good afternoon. Happy Workers' Day, and welcome to Sokoto on Nationwide. Sokoto State Government has settled over 5 billion naira backlog of retirement benefits to retired civil servants in three years. Governor Amin Waziri Tambol made the disclosure at 2018 May Day celebrations in Sokoto. Dalhata Abdullahi has the report. In Sokoto State, the 2018 May Day celebration featured much passed by numerous unions under the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, respectively. <laughs> Controller Labour, Sector Office of the Federal Ministry of Labour and the Productivity, it was said, enhancing economic productivity remains a hallmark of the federal government to boost the purchasing power of the workforce. Sector State Governor Amin Waziri Tambol said, the progress of any state lies with the availability of skilled manpower. He said, in addition to the settlement of workers' benefits and enhanced welfare of service, the state government has implemented new salary structures for 
behalf of state-owned tertiary institutions, as well as prioritize the provision of houses and owner occupier to the civil servants. Our administration had always accorded high priority to activities of the labor unions, considering their invaluable role in advancing the development and welfare of the workforce. While acknowledging the commitment and the concern workers enjoy from the state government, the state NRC chairman, Amin Umar Ahmad, hoped that government will sustain its good work to make life better for the people. In Sakwatu, Dalatu Abdullahi, NTA News. Singapore State Governor Abdulaziz Yari has reaffirmed the commitment of his administration to support any initiative geared towards ending the activities of armed bandits and cattle rustlers in the state. He was speaking at the inauguration of State Branch of Police Community Relations Committee at the police headquarters in Guso. Jamil Ibrahim has more. The Police Community Relations Committee established in 1984 is an initiative of the Nigerian Police Force aimed at enhancing synergy between the police and the law-abiding members of the public in the fight against crime, especially in the area of intelligence gathering. Speaking at the inauguration of the new executives to run the affairs of the PCRC and Forested Chapter, Governor Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar, represented by Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Alaji Sanusi Rikiji, underscores the increasing relevance of the committee to the prevailing security situation in the country. Commissioner of Police and Forested Command, Kenneth Abramson, who remarked that the newly inaugurated officials are people of proven integrity drawn from various spheres of human endeavor, charged them to uphold the provision of the PCRC constitution and all their conduct. Anything you do outside this constitution is ultra virus, non and void. At the moment, we are making progress in reactivating docile PCRC zonal and the state commands. It is and it is CRC chairman of the state chapter, Alaji Bell Lanka Degamji, pledged that they will work assiduously to justify the confidence reposed in there. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And that's it from Sokoto is back to Ronki in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Asmao. To advance a fairer, sustained and balanced growth through tourism, the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation is partnering the private sector to train youth on tourism-related skills in Abuja. Oinaya Kaluoka reports. The tourism industry consists of various players and tourism demands are being met by the joint efforts of these key players. Recognizing the potentials of tourism as a driver for sustainable development, MTDC and the private sectors train more than 1,000 women and youths from the six area councils in the FCT. It is time for us to put our works to it's time for us to be financially independent. It's time for us to stop looking for jobs out there. When you yourself, you can be an employer of labor. By the time you get beneficiaries and members of dream takers to reach out to the tourism sector, we can be rest assured that tourism in Nigeria will be better off. Representative of the wife of the vice president and other resource persons commended the initiative urging beneficiaries to be serious with the skills learned. Her Excellency, Mrs. Dola Hoshibacho, she's all for lending a helping hand, as this will definitely go a long way to give them the nudge in the direction of self actualization. I don't want to go to a shop where I don't feel welcome, even though I'm spending my money. Beneficiaries were trained on weaving, beads making, tailoring, and makeup techniques. They have really helped me to know what I can do best to, to, to better my life and the life of my family. Certificates and starter packs were presented to them. Oyine Akaloka, NTA News. And to sports, FIFA boosts African team's preparation for 2018 World Cup as Sunday Olapade shines at third Port Harcourt Golf Classic. Kenema Budike tells us more on sports update. As countries intensify preparations towards 2018 FIFA World Cup, which kicks off on the 